Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name's Tianan and today I'm giving you guys a massive book haul. I was not meant to film a book haul this close to Christmas, but honestly I had so many books pre-ordered that I'd kind of forgotten about and they all arrived at once and that is the majority of the stack that I have to show you today. Though I do have one or two books thrown in there that I have picked up myself just because I fancied it, so it's just a bit of a mix of everything. I have some Christmas books, some fantasy books and also a very special unboxing that I will leave till the end. So if that sounds like your type of thing, then definitely keep on watching. Before we dive into the the video though please do check to make sure that you are subscribed to my channel i am bringing out so many videos in the run-up to christmas and i'm so excited for each and every single one the best way to make sure that you don't miss an upload from me is to click the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you will be notified every time that i post your guys' support truly does mean the world to me and it blows me away every time i gain a new subscriber so if you'd like to join my little corner of the internet please don't forget to click that little button but without further ado let's just dive into the book call i think the easiest way for me to do this is just to start at the top and continue all the way down so that's what we're gonna do so the first book I have is the penguin book of Christmas stories and I believe that this is a collection of short stories edited by Jessica Harrison this is such a cute little book definitely an amazing gift if you want to get someone a book for Christmas this is what it looks like for you it's the penguin cloth bound edition and it's just beautiful so it has this lovely quote on the back as well and I saw it and just had to buy it I could not resist I don't normally tend to read short stories I'm very much a dense fantasy type of gal. I don't think you can go wrong with Christmas stories. I feel like it's such a nice thing to have. And from what I remember, there are quite a few stories in here actually. So I think it will be a lovely thing just to pick up every now and again and read a short story from. The next three books I'm going to group together and those are The Christmasaurus, The Christmasaurus and the Winter Witch and The Christmasaurus and the Naughty List. I am aware that all these covers are very reflective so I'm sorry about that. But these are The Christmasaurus books by Tom Fletcher. I've had my eyes on these for a while but I've never picked them up until I saw the first two in paperback in Asda I believe they were in the two for seven pounds deal and I had to snatch them up I really wanted them anyway but the thing that sold me on them was the sprayed edges so I did take these two home and I was actually aware that Tom Fletcher was bringing out a new book in the series which is this one so I did pop this on my wish list thinking when I do read the other two I will pick this one up but one of you got there first so I do just want to take a minute to say a massive thank you to Claire at Books and Ink for sending me this book. I was blown away when I opened it. I really did not expect it and it just meant so much that you wanted to send it to me so thank you so so much. Your note was also really nice. I do still have it but Claire said enjoy your gift. I really hope you enjoy the book. If it's as good as the others you are in for a great read and I definitely think I will be in for a great read. I've heard nothing but amazing reviews for this series and I think what I'm gonna do is just read you the synopsis for this one because I don't actually remember what this is about. So it says well bless my Kringles Santa said with a tear in his eye. It's a baby dinosaur. Forget everything you thought you knew about the North Pole. Pop a crumpet in the toaster and get ready to meet a boy called William Trundle, his dad Mr. Bob Trundle, Santa Claus, yes the real Santa Claus, an elf named Snozzle Trump, Brenda Payne the meanest girl in school, possibly the world, a nasty piece of work called Hunter and a most unusual dinosaur. Now I do believe that we have disability rep in here, I believe the main character is in a wheelchair and I just have a feeling that this is going to be the most wholesome Christmas book. So I'm gonna let you in on a little sneak peek. I have decided that in the run-up to Christmas I will either be doing a 24 or 48 hour readathon where I will be reading these three books. I cannot wait you guys. I think it's just gonna be the most fun day and it will definitely get me in the Christmassy mood. So hopefully you'll be looking forward to that. I'm very excited to dedicate some time to these and read them and just get in the festive mood because I just think it's going to be the best time. So thank you again to Claire for sending me the third one. I honestly can't believe it but it does mean the world to me so thank you once again. And then I think this is the last Christmassy book that I have but it is Midnight in Everwood by Emma Kuznia. And guys, oh my gosh, I'm gonna give you a close up because this is a stunning book. It also has these sprayed edges and when I tell you I cannot wait to read this, I'm not exaggerating. This is one of the first books I'm gonna pick up in December. I just think it's gonna be an amazing time and it is a retelling of the Nutcracker as well so definitely fitting for Christmas. I will just quickly say here I'm not gonna give a full synopsis for every single one of these books because we would be here 
for way too long. So yeah, I'm not gonna do that. Next up, we have Frost Heart Rise of the World Eater by Jamie Litzler. This is the third book in the Frost Heart trilogy, and I believe the last one, which is crazy. But this is an amazing middle grade polar fantasy series. I love the first book. I was meant to read the second book this month for Believeathon, but I still haven't gotten to it yet. But you can bet that I pre-ordered this, and I'm so glad that I did because I will probably want to dive into this one straight away after reading the second one. In this one, we follow our main character, Ash, and he lives out in the coldest part of the monster-infested snow sea with only his yeti guardian, Tobu, for company. One day, though, Ash reveals that he has some sort of magical powers, and he is whisked aboard the Frost Heart, which is a daring explorer sleigh. He then sets out to find his missing parents, but of course, he faces trouble along the way that he has to solve with this amazing crew. That's all I'm gonna say about this series. It's one that you should definitely pick up. I would honestly recommend it to anyone. I had such a good time reading the first one. It does also have illustrations throughout. Let's see if I can find you a page without spoiling it. There we are. This is a little example. And I think it just adds to the story and gives you just the best experience. It is truly a beautiful book. And even though I'm sad that it's over now and that I know we won't be getting any more books in this series, I'm so happy to own them all. I'm so excited to finally read the last two books and hopefully I can get to them soon. Next up are another set of books that I'm going to group together. Two of them are from the same series and then I have another one from the same world but different series. So first up, the two books that I have from the same trilogy are The Golden Fall and Fall's Fate. These are the second and third books in the Tawny Man trilogy by Robin Hobb and oh my gosh you guys, I love that trilogy so so much I had to buy the physical copies. I wish I had the physical copies whilst I was listening to the audiobook because I would have loved to read along just because I felt like there was so much going on, so much that I was missing where if I had the physical book I could easily follow along and kind of make sure that I didn't miss anything. Saying that though, I am slowly collecting all of Robin Hobb's books as I read them, so I definitely needed to pick these up. Definitely one of my favourite trilogies. Love Robin Hobb so, so much. Her writing is just amazing. Her world building, her characters, the politics in her world. It's just top notch, so I would highly recommend you pick up Robin Hobb if you haven't already, because I'm honestly having the most amazing time reading her books. And speaking of Robin Hobb, I do have another book of hers to show you. This is Dragon Keeper, and it's the first book in a quartet known as the Rainwild Chronicles. Now this is Robin Hobb's only quartet, I believe. All her other series have been trilogies, but I believe that there was some issue with the publisher and things like that, which meant that they were published as four books. This is the first one though, it's Dragon Keeper. I have already read this one and again, loved it so, so much. It's definitely got a different vibe to her adult fantasy. This is classed as more YA, which I definitely get. But then again, I love this one. Cannot wait to see where we go in the next few books. Books, and this is just another series that I'm bound to love. Next up, I have Beasts of Prey by Ayanna Gray, which very satisfyingly rhymes. And I honestly don't know a thing about this one because I believe this was an extra book in a fairy loot. So I am just going to read it out to you. Lacossa was once a city of magic. Now magic is nothing more than a myth. Coffee is a beast keeper at Lacossa's infamous night zoo, caring for fearsome creatures to pay off her family's debts, until she mistakenly unleashes a wild and mysterious power that sends the night zoo up in flames. Econ is destined to become an elite warrior, like his father and brother before him, until the fire at the night zoo throws his destiny into disaster and he is cast out forever. Thrown together, Coffee and Econ have only one choice. They must enter the terrifying greater jungle and capture the Shitani, the legendary monster that has plagued Lacossa for a century. Magic has returned to Lacossa and the Hunt has begun. Okay, that is definitely high on my TBR. That sounds amazing. It sounds right up my street. Very much getting Jurassic Park type of vibes. And if you don't know, Jurassic Park is one of my favorite ever film franchises. Love it so, so much. So this is one that I am now very excited for. Next up, we have After Love, which is again, a fairy loot edition. To be honest, just looking at it, I'm not sure if it's gonna be a book for me, but let's read the synopsis and see what it's about. Car headlights. The last thing Ash hears is the snap of breaking glass as the windscreen hits her and shatters into a million pieces like stars. But she made it, she's still here. Or is she? This New Year's Eve, Ash gets an invitation from the afterlife she can't decline to join a clan of fierce girl reapers who take the soul of the city's dead to await their fate. But Ash can't forget her first love, Poppy, and she will do anything to see her again, even if it means they only get a few more days together, dead or alive. I don't quite know. It seems very romance heavy, and for you guys that know me, you know that I'm not too keen on that. I do love a fantasy romance, and I'm not sure if this is more 
more contemporary. Obviously it has the fantasy twist with the reapers and things like that, but I'm just not sure. So if any of you have read this, please let me know if you think I would enjoy it or not. It's a beautiful book, so it would be a shame to unhaul it, but I'm just not sure if it's for me. So please do let me know. Next up, one that I'm excited for is Defy the Nights by Bridget Kemmerer. Bridget Kemmerer is the author of the A Curse of Dark and Lonely trilogy, which I loved the first book. I still haven't carried on with the series, but I really do want to. I love the writing style, I love the humour, and I just had a pleasant experience reading it, so I'm very excited to dive into this one. This honestly reminds me of Tangled, just from what I've read of the synopsis, but essentially it says here, the kingdom of Kandala is on the brink of disaster. Rifts between sectors have only worsened since the sickness began ravaging the land, and the only known cure, an elixir made from the moonflower petal, is severely limited. Within the royal palace, the king holds a tenuous peace with a ruthless hands. That's all I'm going to read. The synopsis is quite lengthy, so I'm not going to read you all of that. I kind of want to dive into this one not really knowing anything as well. I feel like I will enjoy it a lot more if I do that. So I am going to leave it there. This is another stunning edition. I believe it was in another fairy loot that I didn't unbox. I did unbox a few fairy loot boxes off camera this year, just because I have had a few very bad months and essentially didn't want to film anything. I just wanted to sit down, open my box and not feel the pressure of filming. So even though they are fairy loot books, I haven't really shown them on my channel yet but very excited for this one I feel like I'll have to get to it soon I know I say that about all these books but it's true I feel like this is one I'm gonna really love and fly through as well by the way if you see me sitting weird it's because Kiwi has fallen asleep on me and I have a bit of a dead leg but obviously I don't want to move her so <laughs> please just ignore that I'm going to suffer so that she can sleep but the next book that I have to show you is one that I'm so excited for and that is Skin of the Sea by Natasha Bowen look at how beautiful this cover is guys I cannot get over it. It is what first drew me to the book, I'm not gonna lie, I'm sorry. I know you shouldn't judge a book by its cover, but how could I not when it's this stunning? For this one it says, Simi pray to the god once. Now she serves them as a mammy water, a mermaid collecting the souls of those who die at sea and blessing their journeys back home. But when a living boy is thrown overboard, Simi does the unthinkable. She saves his life, going against an ancient decree, and punishment awaits those who dare to defy it. To protect the other mammy water, Simi must journey to the supreme creator to make amends. But all is not as it seems. There's the boy she rescued, who knows more than he should, and something is shadowing Simi, something that would rather see her fail. Danger lurks at every turn, and as Simi draws closer, she must brave vengeful gods, treacherous lands, and legendary creatures, because if she doesn't, then she risks not just the fate of all Mamiwata, but also the world as she knows it. So a high stakes mermaid inspired fantasy. What more do I need to know, you guys? I am sold on this book, cannot wait to read it. I'm definitely gonna have to find room on my TBR for this one, and I've just got a feeling that I'm going to love it. The next book I have to show you is Aurora's End by J. Christoph and Amy Kaufman. This is the third and I believe final book in the Aurora cycle by them, which is a sci-fi trilogy. I read the first book when it first came out and I did enjoy it. However, with the second book, everyone was saying that it's better to dive into the second book when you have the third book to hand because it ends on such a cliffhanger. So that's what I did. I essentially didn't read the second book and carry on with this trilogy. So I might now have to go back and read the first one because I can't quite remember what goes on. All I remember is that we have some space cadets and we follow a boy who's at the top of his class however one day when he goes on a mission he finds a girl that's been asleep for years. Because of this he is ultimately forced to be with the bottom of the barrel. I think he misses some sort of important ceremony but then the new team that he's on start to find out things about the world that they're living in, the companies that they're serving and they essentially have to try and make it on their own to survive. Sorry that's not the most coherent synopsis, <laughs> I can't quite remember the first one like I said but looking forward to diving into this one I might go the audio book route because that is how I read the first book. I did listen to it and I had a very pleasant experience doing so. I find it quite hard to get into my sci-fi books so having an audiobook to hand is really helpful and it means I can pick it up a lot easier. Staying on the sci-fi theme, the next book I have is Cytonic by Brandon Sanderson. This is Brandon Sanderson's YA sci-fi series. Again, not sure if it's a trilogy. If it is, then this is the last book but I'm not 100% sure like I say. This is very much the same as the Aurora Cycle for me where I read the first book, really enjoyed it, and then never carried on with the rest of the books in the series. I have heard mixed things about the second book, which I think is what put me off a bit. People say that it's quite boring, that it doesn't really give you anything new. It's a lot of repetition, which I'm not keen on, especially for a sci-fi where I need it to be quite fast paced for me to get through it. But saying that, I did enjoy the first one. I would like to carry on with this series, and that is essentially why I pre-ordered the third book. This is another space cadet type of book where the human race are fighting an alien race. Now our main character Spencer's father was a very renowned fighter until he deserted and because he deserted he and his whole family were 
branded as traitors. Now Spencer's only dream is to become a pilot and to fight in this war, but because of her father's title hanging over her, this is made extremely difficult. So it's all about Spencer trying to prove everyone wrong and fight for her place on this team. Again, that's all I'm gonna say. I'm quite shocked that I remember all of that actually, because I did read it so long ago now. I think it was a year and a half ago maybe. So quite a long time considering how many books I read a year, but hopefully I can get back into this series soon because as I've said, I would like to finish it off. The next book I have to show you, I'm so excited about, even though I can't quite remember what it is about. But that one is Gilded by Marissa Meyer. If you don't know, Heartless by Marissa Meyer is one of my favorite books of all time. I did recently reread it and I just had the most amazing time doing so. It's an Alice in Wonderland retelling, which again is one of my favorite stories and I just have such a good time with it. This is her newest book though and oh my god, I didn't see it. There's a face on the cover. Can you see the eyes under the crown? That really scared me for a second there. I believe that this is a retelling of King Midas, who is the king in ancient Greece that could turn anything he touched into gold. Let's just double check that though. So the synopsis says, long ago, cursed by the god of lies, a miller's daughter has developed a talent for spinning stories that are fantastical and spellbinding and entirely untrue. Also, everyone believes. When one of Serelda's outlandish tales draws the attention of the sinister Erkling and his undead hunters, she finds herself swept away Way into a grim world where ghouls and phantoms prowl the earth and hollow-eyed ravens track her every move. The king orders Serelda to complete the impossible task of spinning straw into gold or be killed for telling falsehoods. In her desperation, Serelda unwittingly summons a mysterious boy to her aid. He agrees to help her for a price. Soon, Serelda realises that there is more than one secret hidden in the castle walls, including an ancient curse that must be broken if she hopes to end the tyranny of the king and his wild hunt forever. Okay, so this might be more of a Rumpelstiltskin retelling, not King Midas. I'm not sure sure how I got those two mixed up. Maybe I just saw the gold crown on here and jumped to conclusions. I swear there is a King Midas retelling coming out soon though, because like it's in my mind. I can picture it. I just thought it was this one, but that's fine. I love a good Rumpelstiltskin retelling anyway. This sounds amazing. Cannot wait to read it. You guys know I love my retelling, so definitely high up on my TBR now, and hopefully, as I keep saying, I can get to it soon. Next up, we have Little Thieves by Margaret Rogerson. I know I said I wasn't going to read the synopsis for every single book, but I feel like I have to because the synopsis for all of these books are amazing and I feel like they just do such better jobs at describing these books than I ever could. So once again, I'm just gonna do that. It says, Vanja Schmidt knows that no gift is freely given, not even a mother's love. The adopted goddaughter of death and fortune, Vanja has long made her own way in the world as the dutiful servant of Princess Giselle. Until a year ago, when her otherworldly mothers demanded payment for their care and Vanja decided to steal her future back by stealing Giselle's life. With the help of an enchanted string of pearls, Vanja transformed into her former mistress and took her place, leaving the real Giselle a penniless nobody. Now Vanja leads a lonely but lucrative double life as a princess and jewel thief, charming the nobility while emptying their coffers to fund her great escape. Until, one heist away from freedom, Vanja crosses the wrong god and is cursed to turn into jewels stone by stone. With a feral guardian half-god, Giselle's sinister fiancé and an over-eager junior detective on her tail, Vanja has just two weeks to pull off her biggest grift yet. Or she risks losing more than a freedom, she could lose her life. That just sounds amazing. First off, we have shape-shifting in a way, stolen identity, a trope that I love, but also turning into jewels. How crazy is that? I cannot wait to dive in. I think I'm gonna keep this towards the spooky season for next year, just because those are the kind of vibes that I'm getting. I'm getting quite a dark atmosphere, and I think it'll just be perfect for the spooky season. Next up, I have Vespertine by Margaret Rogerson. And once again, look at the beautiful cover, guys. It's just stunning. This is the author of An Enchantment of Ravens and Sorcery of Thorns, so if the name sounds familiar to you, that's why. I've read both of those books and really enjoyed them, so when I found out that Margaret Rogerson had a new book coming out, I had to pre-order it. All I know about this one is that our main character is a grey nun, which means that she has to clean the dead bodies of people before sending them onto the afterlife. But one day, her convent is attacked, and the main character wakes up this ancient spirit to help protect everyone there. I believe that by doing this, she faces a load of different consequences, and she has to go on to face them. I just don't want to read you the synopsis again, guys, but that is all I really know. That's all I want want to know. There are priestesses in here, there is a lot of forbidden magic, sinister saints, and hidden evil, so sounds like it's going to be a wild ride and I'm just here for it. Right, my battery is flashing at me, so if anything changes in the next clip, it's because I've had to put you on charge. Okay, so it is a while later now, I'm sorry if anything's changed. Also, if my eyes are going red, it's because I've been wearing my contacts all day, and this is the last video.
video I'm filming so I can take them out straight after this but for now if I look a bit scary I'm sorry. The next book that I'm going to talk to you about today is These Hollow Vows by Lexi Ryan. Again I do believe that this is a fairy loot edition and I'm basing that just on the fact that it has sprayed edges but this is an interesting one it's to do with Faye and the Unseelie Court so I believe that our main character Bree's sister is taken by the king of the Unseelie Court and it says there's nothing Bree wouldn't do to get her back including making a deal with the king himself to steal three magical relics from the rival Seelie Court. I love anything to do with Faye and the Unseelie Court so I feel like this is going to be a darker YA fantasy and I'm completely here for it. I feel like this is going to be one that I absolutely love. It sounds right up my street and once again I cannot wait to get to it. Next up we have this beautiful edition of Laura Olympus by Rachel Smythe. This is the Illumicrate exclusive edition which has these stunning sprayed edges. I've never actually read this before. I believe it's available online but there's just been so much hype for it that I couldn't not pre-order it. Plus it's a Hades and Persephone story so you know I just had to get it. There's no way I couldn't pick myself up a copy but it does say on the back of this this volume collects episodes 1 to 25 of the number one webtoon comic Law Olympus. So yes not your traditionally formatted novel but yeah this just looks beautiful. So here's a little example of the art style. I just love it. I feel like it's one I'm gonna fly through and hopefully really enjoy based on everyone else's thoughts. The next three books I'm gonna show you I'm not going to go into too much detail on because these are the books that are featured in my most recent fairy loot unboxings so if you haven't checked those out please do go and watch them I will leave them linked up above and down below for you but first off I have two copies of a book to show you and that is for Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber so I pre-ordered this edition for myself it's just the UK standard edition and this is the fairy loot edition which is pink and has stunning sprayed edges. The thing I love about the standard edition though is if I take this off we have a beautiful print in gold foiling on the book itself so that's why I love this one and of course the fairy loot special edition is also beautiful. And then just another stunning book we have Jade Fire Gold which is just beautiful again. This is described as girls of paper and fire meets a song of raised and ruin so if you liked either of those or both I would highly recommend you read this. And we have finally made it to the unboxing guys for the last three books and I cannot wait to see what these are like so without further ado let's just dive in. Okay so this is the little sneak peek. Can you tell what it is yet? We have, oh they're all wrapped together. Oh my gosh these are beautiful. Kiwi! We're not having a good time tonight guys. Kiwi just knocked over my entire setup so the camera, the ring light, everything but I hope we're all good. I think I put them in the right order but I might be wrong. I've not read any of these books yet so apologies but here we have The Winter Night Trilogy by Catherine Arden. One of if not my most anticipated trilogy. So here we have the first book The Bear and the Nightingale. This is the front cover. This is the back. It has these stunning blue sprayed edges and let's see if there's anything under the dust jacket. Yes, there is. We have a little bird and all of these are signed by the author. So I'll show you the first one and we can assume that the rest look the same, but there we are. Like I said, I believe this is the second one, but I'm not too sure, but this is the front cover. It's just stunning again. This is the back and this one has these striking red pages. And then lastly and possibly my favourite just because I love polar bears and this just gives me polar fantasy vibes, we have The Winter of the Witch that looks like this. Here is the back cover for you and these are the gorgeous green sprayed edges. I am over the moon with this set you guys. Even though I haven't read the books yet, I have a feeling that I'm just going to fall in love with this world. Everyone that I've seen mention this series has just raved about it and as I've mentioned it definitely sounds like my type of thing. So, so happy to have my hands on these. They're just beautiful. I always go on about how much I love Fairy Loot and their special editions and I just love when they do these sets because they are just stunning. But that is it for today's video guys. We have finally made it to the end. I believe I hold 26 books in this video which is insane. I definitely was not meant to hold that much. But I'm so excited to get to every one of these books. Definitely let me know down in the comments which book I should prioritise, which is your favourite, which do you think I will enjoy the most. I definitely need a little push to actually pick a book because otherwise I will just stare at this pile for ages unsure where to start. So if you could help me out that would be great. If you've made it this 
this far into the video though and would like to let me know, please do comment some blue and snowy emojis to represent this last book series. It truly does make my day when you guys comment the emoji of the video, so please do that if you're still here. Whilst you're down in the comments, please don't forget to click the like button if you like this video and the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content from me. I have so many more Christmassy videos coming your way and I cannot wait for you guys to see them, so definitely make sure that you are subscribed. And other than that, thank you guys so, so much for watching. It truly does mean the world to me and I will see you soon in my next video. Goodbye!